Paradox Development Studio is a game development studio that's been existing since the mid 90s. Uh, a lot of the people working here has been working since God knows how long. Uh, yeah. yeah, and we've been doing like uh, lots of I mean, really great games. I've been doing Europa Universalis, Heart of Iron, Victoria, Crusader Kings. Yeah, Sengoku, Rome, whatever. Yeah, those kind of games, yeah. E even more games I can't even remember. It's been a long, t it's been a long time. Yeah. Do you have a personal favorite? Well, my p personal favorite has always been Europa Universalis. I mean, it was the game that I I played before I started here. I played Europa Universalis one and two, and and you know when when the company was hiring, I thought that I really have to work here. Uh, can I say no? No, I can't mention that name. So let's say uh, I I kind of like Arch Fire, I think. Nah, I know, no, the Crusader Kings. No, uh, Victoria. No, I can't decide. I like them all. <laughs> Um, how come you started creating strategy games? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I did other types of games before doing console games and then when I moved back to Sweden and I know that this company was starting up to make a strategy game, you know, it felt like, oh, this is awesome, I want to make this game. And since then we've been making more and more grand strategy games. We were the ones that invented it term grand strategy yeah and i mean we really make the games we want to play i mean i mean we when we made when you guys when i came in here you guys were working hard to ryan too and i mean that was a really fun game it really turned out well and then we started to you know play that game and we played the old european universalis games and you know we, we keep talking about the games we play and, and really want to make new stuff and i mean that's really i think what drives the development process around here yeah like playing the games and then uh, competitively multiplayer against the others and yeah exactly and fighting about it in the office and <laughs> yeah you do that a lot well we have on tuesdays what we call multiplayer tuesday where most of the teams tries to play a, a long-term campaign in one game and continue playing it um uh, i think the most fun campaigns has probably been in e3 was it during the here to the throne development yeah, I think there was something like that. And people wrote these really complicated... We started off with people having to write update mails to outline the issues that they found, but they ended up writing some sort of in-character, threatening emails about, you know, my country will conquer your country, and this, these, con these lands are legitimately mine, and they did Photoshop work, and it was... Yeah, it was pretty it was awesome. Great. It's like uh, seeing people like looking up how to translate stuff into Czech, just to make a, a proper emperor of Bohemia's proper claims on the world. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of fun. <laughs> well, I, I think that it's a game that makes you think, right? And, you know, you have you have the world. And I mean, where you, you can plan out, okay, if I do this and, and I, I, I take that province, you know, then something will happen and then this, this, the effects of my decisions will sort of spread across the world. And I also think that the history interest, yeah. I think also it's important. A, a quote from a character we were heavily involved with a few years ago in Paradox uh, describes the fun with strategy games very well. Cross your enemies, drive them before you and hear the lamentations of the women. <laughs> I think that the historical part is really important for us. I mean, we're really interested in history, and so so really try to get to come really close to to actual history. And I also think that historical games really makes for good game design because it gives you automatically the sort of you know it's not balanced. So every country you play has a unique challenge. But then I mean, at the end of the day, fun games is the most important for us. So. We, we can make compromises as well, but, but history is really at the foundation of how we design our games. Yeah, but if something uh, that is historical makes the game don't work, we go basically scrap the history stuff and gameplay is important. But uh, of course it must feel historical. When you, when you, first of all, you have like a historical setting uh, and uh, 
that sort of, I you mean, know, if you know a little bit of history or you just heard about it and you know, remember something from school, it's like a world that's already been created. I mean, when people make other titles, they have to make a believable world. We have ours already. And then, as I, say, as I said, when you have a historical setup in the game, you really get the sort of different types of countries. You can play like Portugal, which is a small, weak country, or you can play France, which is a big, strong country, and the challenges are totally different. Or the Soviet Union versus yeah. Nazi Germany in, in Archivaria. Yeah, That's exactly. Really, really different in the. How yeah, from if you choose to play for like but, Italy and Archivaria. It's also the flavor that's really fun when you're playing, uh, let's say, uh, William the Conqueror. Mm -hmm. It's really, really different from playing uh, Duke Svend of Östergötland in, yeah, definitely. in Crusader Kings. Definitely. 